Hey, hey, this is Chris Bradley with Produce Like a Boss, where we simplify and demystify music production for the singer-songwriter so that you can become a self-sufficient musician. Today, I'm bringing you the video version of the Produce Like a Boss podcast, episode number 65, How to Make Money Online as a Producer, Session Singer, and Musician with the CEO of Air Gigs, David Blacker. But before we jump in, if you're sponging what I'm spilling on this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, in case you haven't heard of Air Gigs, Air Gigs is an online marketplace where producers connect with and hire award-winning session musicians, vocalists, and recording engineers online. So today we discuss everything from how to sign up for Air Gigs to how to optimize your profile so that you can get hired to the booking terms. Now, I have personally found this platform to be very lucrative as a freelance musician, producer, and session singer, so I am really pumped to share today's episode with you. Let's jump in. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss. All right, you guys. Today we have the CEO of Air Gigs, David Blacker. Welcome to the show, David. Hey, Chris. Great to be with you. So glad to have you here today. So I've given a brief bio about Air Gigs um, in my podcast intro, but for those that are unfamiliar, can you tell my audience what is Air Gigs and who do you guys serve? Sure. So Air Gigs started in 2012. I think it was a first marketplace platform for hiring professional session musicians, vocalists, recording engineers, for specifically for remote sessions. And uh, what started as a little trickle has grown quite significant over the years. And now we've got a cr pretty amazing talent roster on the site. And, uh, you know, people are doing sessions, creating songs every month remotely back and forth, you know, thousands of songs. And it's, it's just uh, sort of a miracle what it's uh, sort of evolved into. That's amazing. What year did you start again? In 2012. So we're going on about 10 years now. Wow, that's incredible. I didn't realize you guys had been doing this since 2012. Um, yes. And I, I love that. And I love how a site like yours really creates this new industry within the industry where musicians are now able to sell their services and serve clients rather than just having to rely on on typical like an artist career or, or even getting out there and hoofing the pavements networking wise and trying to get into studios. It's like if people are set up at home and they've got a skill and they can record themselves, then they're ready to kind of go pro from their home studios, right? Yeah, I mean, like in the early days when before Air Gig started, we were starting to see this kind of uh, possibility emerge. You know, the gear was getting better and people were, you know, internet connectivity and all that. And, and so it was just sort of like, yeah, let's, let's, let's take a shot at this because we were involved in some multimedia and some production in our own studio. And it all kind of fell together nicely, but it started very much like a website just with our friends and, you know, colleagues and stuff. And then it started to really go. And then we're like, okay, we're we have a tech company here we got to figure <laughs> out. So, um, you know, that's been a, quite a wild ride, but it's been super exciting and, and, and fulfilling. Yeah, I love that. And it really ties into what I'm really passionate about, which is obviously teaching people how to produce, but also about the the possibilities that that come with that. You know, like I, I remember not like when I wasn't able to produce myself, what it took to get into the studio to be able to take work as a session singer and how much my life changed. The the moment I was able to do it um, with just a little bit of knowledge and the right equipment and and the right skills to be able to go, I can engineer this from, from home and connect with clients without having to do all, a lot of heavy lifting on marketing, like, you know, ads or whatever ever by, you know, joining forces with a platform like Air Gigs. And what's so cool about what you do is you kind of bridge the gap um, in the sense that there are so many talented artists out there who, you know, may due to technical limitations or whatever, not be able to take advantage of these opportunities. So you very aptly saw that and kind of filled that and said, you know, here's, here's how you do it. So that's super cool. Yeah. You know, it was especially kind of a thing for me was when I was in Nashville and I was starting to do, I'm in San Diego now, but I was starting to do session work online. And I remember a manager that I was linked up with that was supposed to, you know, potentially work with me. And he was like, wow, that, that's cool. You're doing that little online thing. But like, I got to get you into the studios around here. Of course, he would be taking a cut of that. And he goes, and you'll make like, you know, and he, he threw some numbers out to me. And I was like, 
that's less than what I make doing this at home. And I don't even have to put on real pants. Like (laughs) needless to say, I did not move forward with that, that deal, but it's just, oh God, it's so amazing. So uh, tell me about the user experience for a client when they sign up for air gigs, how do they connect with a musician and hire them for a job? Sure. I mean, we, so when you're first sign up, we'll sort of lightly profile you say, what is your interest here? Are you interested in providing services or finding talent? And then if you tell us you're interested in finding talent, we'll kind of give you some basic tips for getting started, how to bookmark artists, how to reach out. And typically the way it works is the communication is wide open. So we don't sort of funnel people into uh, uncomfortable situations because we want, after doing this for a while, we want people to communicate before placing orders, especially in something like remote sessions, because, you know, it's, there's so much possibility for uh, misunderstandings or miscommunication. So like, sure. basically the first step is always get in, uh, reach out, you know, bookmark some, some great talent that's going to be a good fit for your project or post your project on our proposal board and you'll start receiving proposals. And then it's about communication, get, you know, gauging how responsive different service providers are to you. Do they get your vision? And then when you feel comfortable, you can either book one of their existing service packages, which comes, you know, complete with like how many revisions are included, how, you know, how long it will be until the delivery happens and you can read past reviews and all that. Um, and yeah, that's basically the, the starting place. And usually all the technical de- details are worked out in advance, like what DAW on, or, or are you going to, you know, provide me with a stereo mix or just the stems or it, those kinds of things. Awesome. Awesome. And then what is the experience, the user experience for the musician? Like how do they get signed up and f- connect with uh, clients and jobs and stuff? So similarly, like if they tell us, hey, I'm interested in offering services, we'll kind of get them some emails out to kind of explain uh, a lot of the stuff that that you so uh, well explain, which is like, you know, it's more first step before you, you know, music talent is one thing, but but being able to communicate and market and, and run a business, which is essentially what you're doing in a micro way on these platforms is very important. So all those aspects like setting up your profile fully, you know, getting, making sure your images are looking really good, making sure your media is well clipped and, and not like, you know, one of one tip that we give to a lot of new sellers is that, you know, say you're a vocalist, if you lead with one, uh, you know, the, sorry, when, when clients are browsing the site, there are two audio clips right beneath everyone's listing quickly available. So if say you lead with two songs that, you, you know, you have a great vocal performance, but it only comes in after 30 seconds or 45 seconds, or that style doesn't resonate with a particular <laughs> client. Well, they're going to move on quick. So right. we always recommend to create like reels, you know, like clips fading in and out so that you can get a sense of variety and, you know, to really completely fill out your profile and then check the jobs board. Um, and, you know, uh, you can feature your service too. That's a way to kind of get more exposure, but it's not required. Uh, that's a paid promotion. And that's really the sort of initial steps to obviously telling, you know, your your people as well that, you know, I'm on air gigs. And typically if you tag us, we'll, we'll help, you know, share that back, you know. So those are the ways most service providers get started. I love that. And I, and I love that, that you're bringing that awareness to artists as well around like, Hey, like, you know, this is kind of like a, you're, you're starting a business here, right? And you need to make sure all your, all all of your assets are in place so that when you go to submit a proposal to a client, like that, you know, for example, having a demo reel of songs going in and out of each other. So you can demonstrate various styles, you know, making sure that your pictures look professional or at least catchy. You know, I say, if you're going out there to get vocal jobs, why not show yourself in the studio at a mic, you know, um, you know, singing a vocal or at least, you know, just kind of have a picture that is super professional where you're looking at the camera and it shows like, hey, I'm a singer rather than like something that might demonstrate more of you as a guitar player or as an artist, just communicating that clearly through your your media and and uh, and your bio. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I love about your platform above all other platforms in this space is that you allow musicians the ability to post different services, right? That they offer rather than just having one profile, which would kind of force them to throw the whole kitchen sink at somebody if they offered multiple services. You know what I mean? 
Uh, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I think we think that's an advantage too. It's, it's, it's sort of like, because so many musicians do wear so many hats from, you know, engineer to producer to maybe they play the mandolin, keys, sing, you know. And so this gives people an opportunity to to decide, you know, like, for instance, in our folk instruments category, you have like a lot of folks who will create one service package for, say, dobro, mandolin, uh, lap steel, you know, s slide, those kinds of things, because a banjo, because they, they fit together, you know, and so someone can, but they can make that choice to say, well, you know what? I really want to create a dedicated banjo service page and a dedicated, you know, slide guitar page or whatever, you know. So um, so it's kind of, yeah, in, in the field, in the musician's uh, hands and also allows us to capitalize on, the, like, we just opened up a category called live stream shows due to the pandemic. You know, people oh. were like, how do we do this? And we just threw it out there and said, hey, guys, you know, maybe maybe we can get you guys some bookings for corporate kind of things through these Zoom events and stuff. And it, you know, it it started, you know, getting bookings and all that stuff. So it really does allow a certain amount of flexibility. So I'm glad you like it and <laughs> see that. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't realize that you had added that live streaming feature. That's that's incredible. Um, so as you were saying, you can pay for a feature, but it's not required. So what is required to use the platform? Is there any monthly fee or is there a booking percentage? It's a booking percentage. So um, there is no fee to list your services. The only time you pay a commission is when there is a booking. Um, the commission starts at 15% and then it goes down to 10% when you're top rated. And oh. Yeah. And then if you take a, if you accumulate enough to take a withdrawal of 500 or more, we pay you back 2%. So it can be as low as 8% or as high as 15%. One other benefit to the paid feature is a little complicated math here is that if you pay to feature your service and you're new, it's automatically 10%. So it's not, you don't pay and also pay 15%. You get the disc, the top rated 10% uh, rate. Does that make I, sense? Yeah, 100%. And what I love about that is that, first of all, 15% booking fee is very standard and very fair anyways, but you're also, you know, and you're starting there and then giving an opportunity to work down through, like you said, paying to feature or even like, you know, what, what is it called? Being top rated. And you're giving yeah. all these other opportunities to actually lower that. But even 15% had that been a flat rate would have been fair, I think. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 And, and I... I, you know, speaking of fees, it's like people, it's important to realize that when you're paying fees, you're getting booked, you yeah. know, so that is, you know, it's good to pay it. I know everyone, no one likes fees, yeah. but yeah. you know, fees do bring with them certain, a certain amount of value. And it's, it's a good to recognize that, you know, there's something to that as an entrepreneur that the more fees you're paying, typically the more work you're getting. So, oh yeah, and that's that's exactly what I say when I'm 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 turning people on to an online platform like this. I'm like, look, you got to look at it as this is what you're paying for marketing. Okay, you don't want to be out there competing at an SEO level with with a company like AirGigs that's put all this you know into their branding. I'm I don't do you guys do Facebook ads? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and like they've got like, you know, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people on the platform. It's like you're you're jumping on a moving train. And of course, if, if people want to come to you directly, then you get to keep all of that. But if somebody's going to come to you through a booking agent, you should be really excited to get that otherwise uh, work that you wouldn't have had. Right. And that, you know, the fee that you're paying is really you should be excited about it. Like that's what yeah. the cost of doing business. Nobody gets to start a business and not make any investments into it. Right. Correct. Correct. And, but at, by the same token, we're always, you know, that's a pain point for our community uh, fees. And so we're always looking at ways, how can we reduce fees? We're looking at a potential ACH payment method we could launch, you know, next year and various things. So it's, it's very much on our mind, you know, always, how can we reduce the fees uh, if at all possible? 100%. And that's what that's what I, I, I love about what you guys are doing, because it's already, I think, pretty fair in the cost of doing business. But you're obviously very focused on serving your community and, and those pain points and, and trying to make sure that people are happy and, and especially taking care of musicians. I mean, like, I have a spot in my heart for that. That's why I'm such a fan of what you guys are doing. Thank you. Likewise. Um, so I know we just mentioned that you that you do Facebook ads. Um, has that been the primary way that you've built your your site over the years? Is through uh, 
ads? Um, good question. You know, when we first put out Air Gigs, um, the, so we, I had studied a bit on marketing and SEO. So we were the first to sort of put like hire an online bass player, hire. And, and so just by being first, that bought us a lot of organic traffic because no one was searching for those things at that time. We were sort of ahead of those searches. But um, so that was important. Um, so that kind of laid the foundation. And then uh, Google ads and Facebook ads and, you know, paid marketing, as well as a lot of um, referrals. Like, uh, you know, we have developed a feature on our site where members can uh, share their reviews. So we think this is like a nice win-win for both of us. Like you can, every review you get on Air Gigs, you can create a beautiful piece of artwork with you playing and the five-star review and and we get a little branding credit, but it's yours to keep and put on your website or put wherever you want. And so that's a nice word of mouth feature as well, you know. Can I tell you how much I love that feature, David? Like when I saw that, I was just, can I give you a slow clap right there? I mean, it's such a win-win. And it's like, you know, I, I tell my students and my audience, like, look, when you're putting yourself out there, you're, you got to think of it like eBay or Amazon, you know, you have to be able to build trust. And if you want someone to feel comfortable hiring you, nothing says that like a five-star review, especially through a reputable site like Air Gigs, right? So I love the graphic and the options that you put together and, and just, it looks so clean and it's such a win-win. So thank you thank for that. You. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we, we love that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed something kind of recently as well that I hadn't seen before, which was uh, an educational aspect to Air Gigs where people are now able to sell courses and trainings. Can yeah. you tell me about that? Sure, sure. So, you know, what was funny was, like you said, about online sessions. So prior to the pandemic, we got a lot of that, like, oh, on online sessions, remote, you know, and then everything went remote and it really threw us, you know, last year was crazy for many reasons, but, you know, we had to, you know, in increase our server capacity. It, like we, it, it got really busy because people were out of options. Yeah. And I have been in my own life, um, a guitar teacher and educator and, you know, um, and, learn some tricks and tips for, you know, putting out, creating digital products and services in that space. And, you know, I thought this would be great around production because it would solve a bunch of different things at once. It would solve, you know, hey, how do we make like money where everything's shut down? There's no live gigs. So, okay, so let's, this is a great opportunity for that. And also, you know, I think there is a lot of opportunity to everyone's these mad scientists in their studios creating sounds and techniques and, you know, different ways of doing things and to create a kind of curated, you know, marketplace of those products really excited us and we uh, were and we just launched it. And so now it really just launched recently, but we're now we're we're starting to get more content and we're going to some real, you know, uh, good instructors. And, uh, you know, if you want to throw anything on there, <laughs> we'd love to have you as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just, we're just about to really blow it open. So. And that just like, oh, that's so awesome because that just continues to add to this whole, like, you know, if there's just, the doors are just I feel like they're just blowing, going down, you know, as far as accessibility into the industry and unique ways to make money in the industry. It used to be like you get a record deal or a publishing deal and like that was kind of it. And then there was like session guys, but like they had to know the studio heads and, you know, you had to be able to have those uh, those connections, right? And now it just, it's so beautiful. It's like, you know, from like doing session work from home to producing for others, to custom songwriting, to now even the, as an educator, right? You've got um, all these platforms to reach people and uh, and make music. I like to say, who needs a side hustle? Like make music your front hustle. There are yeah. so many ways to do that. And I love the way you guys support that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like just sort of trying to find all those because all of us are, you know, as musicians in our local scenes or whatever, a lot of times we're doing some teaching. A lot of times we're playing a session gig. A lot of times we're producing or mixing or, you know, so to be able to find those, you know, to to consolidate those efforts into one place where one effort can serve the other. Like, say you create this great lesson on tone and, and guitar and someone's like, wow, this guy... I love his sound or this gal, I love her sound, you know, and, you know, 
I want to book them so that it like creates that kind of virtuous circle that we're aiming for at least, you know? Yeah, for sure. So curious about this. How do you, how do y'all manage supply and demand? Is there a vetting process or can anyone sign up for air gigs? So anyone can sign up, but there's the the way the system is sort of uh, wired is that it vets itself to a certain extent. Like there oh. are there's uh, controls, you know, in there for for very low priced, overly competitive stuff that 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 gets a little dissuaded uh, in in terms of that. And then if you want to be front and center, we have certain limits before you can promote yourself. So that there and there are. You know, our we have a community manager who tags gigs, uh, services. You know, to to say like this is you know new and noteworthy or something like that. So it's it's sort of like it's it's not it's open to everyone, but at the same time there are mechanisms in place to and we moderate like our our proposal board very closely because we don't want to just flooded with all kinds of stuff. So. That was going to be that's... my next question is like, yeah. is this like a job board that people can just access? Um, it, like everybody, once they sign up and start sending proposals to clients? It is. It is. But it, there is, it's like tiered. So you don't get like, un, like everyone has access to it. So we don't limit any anyone access to any area of the site. But there are, like I said, controls so that, you know, you're not going to be able to send a massive amount of proposals in the in you you know when you're just starting out but after you get a certain number of review, reviews then you get more access. Oh, okay. How many proposals do you get a month when you sign up? Uh, I believe initially it's like 15. Oh. Or wow. it could be 10 or 15. I I got to check but some yeah, I think it's 15 at this time. Wow. That's that's incredible. Without even paying a monthly fee and with yeah. only paying a booking fee, you get 15 opportunities which obviously you're that okay and so obviously i'm just sorry i'm thinking of kind of three different things right now one of those being um i'm sure you encourage people to only apply for jobs that are super specific to their niche and what they specialize in right right and we also have mechanisms in place so that like say the buyer can kind of the client can kind of go through the the proposals received and say this was irrelevant this was um, you know um completely off base so those things help us moderate if you know what i mean like if people are abusing the the system that makes so much sense because the the more you do that the more you can automate that it can it kind of is a, its own intelligence where you don't have to be able to see everything to know how it's all working that's uh that's super smart i dig that um okay and so anyone can get signed up and that was uh and that's how you manage the okay that makes sense Sorry, my wheels are turning right now. This That's is... all right. I, I've been in your seat many times. But... <laughs> so um, what are you guys looking for as far as, um, do you have a, a, a influx of jobs coming in right now where you're like, wow, we really need more singers. We need more top liners. Anything like that? Um, well, vocals are always a huge category for us. Like that's, that's definitely a, a, a really big category. I, I, we're trying to... Uh, you know, the live stream thing has really picked up and that's a new promising area that we'd love to see. Like we thought there would be more adoption of that because there were like, you know, so it just seemed like a natural and we have, you know, a, a number of people doing it, but we thought it, we thought it would be like, oh, no brainer. Yeah. Let, let me play some shows uh, for folks all over the world, you know, and, and there's nothing to lose. So th that we'd like to see more of that uh, filled in and um and, but you know, I think for the most part we're we're pretty solid. I think our, on our side we're trying more now to build in. Like we're about to launch a uh, we're in partnership, uh, like a kind of like a co partnership with a uh, company that is aggregating recording credits. So they're taking like all music and discogs and all this stuff, and they're 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 trying to be the source. And so we're working with them to have like bona fide credits on the site and stuff like that. So that's sort of a divergence from what you said. But yeah, I mean, like live streaming and is, is an area we'd like to see, you know, some more more uh, stuff in. That's sure. so cool. I didn't even know about the live streaming. I can't wait to check that out and actually and share that a little bit further in, in with like my students and stuff. Um, how does this, so tell me more about this feature. You can pay extra to be featured. What does that mean and how much does it cost? How long does it last? Sure. 
So it's $35 for 30 days now. And we're about to launch so that, and it's not recurring, um, which a lot of people have asked for. Can we make it recurring? Cause I don't want to mm -hmm. have to think about this every, so that's about to launch very, very shortly. And it, there's a discount. It's 29 if you do the recurring or it's 33 the first month and then 29 every other month after that. So, um, I like that. So that's, yeah, that's the record, sort of like Amazon does with subscribe and save and that sort of thing. So, so that's that. And then basically what it does is it boosts you to the top of what, you know, the first puts you on the homepage. It puts you in front of our community manager who tags uh, services and shares them widely on, you know, Instagram and, and other social platforms. Um, it gets you to the top of all listings on the main browse page or find pros page and then at the top of your category page and then at the top of search results for which you're relevant for. And so that we see that, you know, a lot of people do that on a repeating basis. That's really cool. How, how could, I guess my, where my, I'm thinking about how this would work. If multiple people are signing up for this, how can that all be on the same front page? Or is it just boost it, well, to the top? It it, it 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 incrementally comes down. Okay. So like whereas but there are different areas. So like it it remains useful, but it starts to lose effectiveness towards the end. You know what I mean? Because more oh, more listings yeah. are okay. coming. But initially you're at the top of everything. So you're on the home page, you're on the top of the fine pros page. So you're getting really good exposure there. Then in your category, say it's, you know, vocals, there's going to be uh, fewer than the homepage or browse or, or find pros page. So, you know, you'll, you'll get much more visibility in your category all the way through to the 30 days. And so same for search results. And again, it takes your commission down if you're new from 15 to 10%. So all those things are sort of the benefits. That makes sense. Okay. And can people pay for multiple features? Like I want to bump myself up as a singer and also as a producer and kind of test out their different services? Absolutely. Yeah, there's no, yeah, you can, any, any service can be promoted. So it's really- At the same time. Really, at the same time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if they're, if they're duplicates, they might get flagged by a moderator like this is the, the you know, like yeah. some- and, People think sometimes that like, hey, if I post four or five vocal services of the same thing, that's going to help me get more bookings. And really what it does is work against them because if you have one service that's starting to get, it's all about like having, building up the social proof and the reviews. So it's better to, you know, consolidate it into one service. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and then that is 35 a month which clearly you're going to make back in your first job, right? It's, and I'll tell you oh, right yeah. now, every time I've paid to be featured, I notice immediately that I get more leads within the first week, usually. Yeah, I mean, it, it does help. And, 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 you know, we know that primarily, you know, from the data, but also because the same people are, are featuring month after month. So, you know, it's sort of, it verifies itself in that way, you know? It, they wouldn't do it if it wasn't working. Totally. Totally. And I didn't make that connection, but that makes sense now too, where they're not just getting that kind of first dibs um, and that first uh, visibility, but you're also, those are the people that you're highlighting on your social media accounts as well. Yes. That is like a value add for that feature. Like, the, you know, we're going to, if you're on social and, you know, and we, and you promote, like, we're going to try to get you out there on, on our social pages. We can't do it for everyone, but we, we try to do it as much as possible. And so if you are a repeat feature, you'll definitely get it at some point, you know, um, you know, if, if the quality of the service is good and all that uh, stuff. So very yeah. cool. Very cool. So I wanted to ask you about this. I noticed that there's a 100% money back guarantee, which I think I, I've heard from some people in my audience that that could be perceived as a high risk for the musician. Can you tell me about that and the purpose of it? Yeah, no, it's a great question and um you know so the, a musician can choose 100 percent guarantee or not and if you don't offer 100 percent guarantee and we say this like as clearly as we can 
you know, this is a no questions asked money back guarantee. This is risky. If you apply this, you're doing it at your own risk. Now we don't, like we, one thing our team does is we look over every cancellation. So if there's a bad cancellation, um, we know about it and we do try to take action if we see any abuse of sellers because we're all musicians and, you know, and we also try to talk to clients because sometimes they just don't know and they don't put it together that like they're new to this, that actually someone spent, you know, four or five hours on your track. Uh, you know, it's not about, oh, it's just not working for me or whatever. I mean, we never have a problem if two people want to cancel together. But, it, you know, if if someone's like, look, I, I did what you asked, then even with the 100% guarantee, we're going to try to go to bat for them and say, you know, if, if they come to us and say, you know, look, I really gave a, 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 a valiant effort on this one and I don't feel this is fair. Even though we say to them, you know, if you don't offer the 100% guarantee, then there's no questions asked. You're, you're paid for your time and effort and, and that's, that's our seller protection. Yeah. So it's kind of a choice. One, yeah, I get that totally. And I think there's two things that come to mind. First of all, offering that guarantee, it's like, I believe that that will attract more to you. So it's a risk that you take in like in any business, like when we do a new product, you know, I have a money back guarantee. And I think for the people that take advantage of it, quote unquote, I, I think that is far uh, less important than the people that feel comfortable in moving forward because they feel like, okay, my back has gotten if this isn't a good fit for me. That's the first thing. So I think it's if it's a psychological logical thing just to keep that in mind in in marketing and, and business that like th there is a lot of value in that and the other thing is is that I I often communicate with my students and my audience that like look when you're doing this session work it's not it's not this whole like hey I'm gonna hire you to do a job okay see you later and you come back and now you've put 20 hours into it and they're like I don't like that you know if if that's the way you're doing business then you're doing business wrong and I like to always like check in it's like okay let's let's talk about all the terms like what's the BPM what's the key what's the style let's use reference tracks right and then oh, check yeah. in along the way so if you're doing vocals for somebody you don't have to stack all your stacks and tune everything before you get feedback you could do a lead and go I want to confirm the tone I want want to confirm the attitude and the emotion and, and and do those communicative things along the way to make sure there's no bad musical surprises. And I'm guessing that on your end, if you saw that kind of communication between the client and the provider, right? And then all of a sudden the client at the last minute was like, nope, I just want my money back. You, you could say like, look, we saw the communication here. Like you were happy. What happened? Exactly. Exactly. That's part of the the whole dispute resolution. And we do try to, you know, ne negotiate cancellation fees where, where we can, you know, our hands, but if you offer a hundred percent guarantee, ultimately our hands are tied because th those are our terms, but that doesn't mean we don't go to bat for you. Or we say, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Client, this is, you're not a good fit for us because this is not, this is not an appropriate way to, you know, treat someone who's, who's working like this. So, um, that's rare, but I'm saying, you know, it, it is a card that we play sometimes if we feel that they're not a good fit because there are other platforms out there and yeah. they can go to those other platforms. <laughs> Totally. So, so yeah, it is at the risk of the artist, but, you know, I think with clear communication along the way, the likeliness of somebody to take advantage of that, if you're communicating along the way is pretty low. I think that's probably there and it probably happens when there's, like you said, a lack of communication or understanding, which can be avoided right. up front. Right. And, and you, as you know, from doing this, you know, extensively, there are red flags, right? Yeah. Like when you, when you first start talking to somebody and maybe the expectations are super, you know, grandiose or, um, you know, really intense. The person may be really. And so there are certain warning flags that you would pay attention to if you were, say, in a live setting that you got to pay attention to in a, in an online setting as well. Would you agree? hundred percent. And, and also I think that you guys have really thought this through as well and kind of built in, in order to manage expectations, you really built your site in a way to, to do that. So even if your provider's not like a hundred percent, like there with like, how do I communicate all this? It's like, you've got it in there. How many revisions are you going to offer? And you're guiding them as they fill out each section to provide their service. Like, here's where you're going to list, you know, what's, what those expectations are. Here's where you could list things like your gear and, and really manage those expectations. So you're setting up the, both the, the client and the provider for success through your automation. That's what we're trying to do. I mean, I think we're trying, that's our biggest like kind of focus is just to really, you know, geek out and get this process really 
well oiled, you know, and and it's it's challenging because there's a lot of heads to it and there's a lot of room for chaos, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, but uh, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, we, I think we've. Uh, I'm amazed sometimes. I look at the progress that we have made. So. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, what are some things that are big no nos that you that you want to watch out for as a provider? Um, I know, for example, sharing outside information and taking work off of the platform is forbidden. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and and why? I mean, I know why, but for the audience, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's taking work off outside the platform is you know we we look at it like we're we're working hard. We've kind of set up a pretty square deal like you know there's no marketing cost no cost to a service provider until until a booking comes in so um you know we're trying to you know acquire these customers and and, and these clients and so that's you know we think that's a fair partnership so mm-hmm. please keep it on site and and don't steal <laughs> you know customers that were we're working hard to get, but at the same time, we try not to be uh, draconian. You know, like if people are, um, you know, like if an opportunity comes up that we don't service or something like that. Well, our our line is always open. Like if you want to talk to us, and someone wants to book me for, you know, something or, or or you know, we're open to that. And certainly, anything like if people are co-promoting or whatever, that's okay. We just want if it's an order. If it's business, keep it on air gigs and keep it clean and just keep it simple. That's really yeah. it. I mean, honor your your booking agent or they're not going to want to book for you anymore. Think of it just like yeah. you were saying, like think of how this applies, like if it was happening, not digitally and give it the same respect you would give that partnership. Right. And most, you know, the lion's share of people do, you know, and, and people who don't get it, we don't really want them anyway because they're yeah. not interested in yeah. building a, you know, a profile. They're not interested in... You know, and, and the nice, I, one of the advantages, I guess, to air gigs is that it's sort of seniority based. So as you build up those reviews, you're going to, you know, have a position there, you know, in, in whatever category you're in. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So and, is- and I just want to point that out for our listeners, because I've noticed um, just a little bit of even innocence as I'm introducing people to this world where they're like, yeah, you know, I signed up for air gigs and then they got hired. And then, you know, they said next time, like, can I just email you? And I said, sure. And I'm like, no, like, like, you know, pay attention to what's happening here. You're you're looking to build a relationship. And the more that you succeed together within this partnership, the more it's like one hand scratches or what is it? One, <laughs> one hand scratches the other back or something like yeah, that. You, you know, it's, it's mutually like that, beneficial, yeah. right? So you're not looking for a one and done. If you look at that, um, you're not going to be successful in business. You have to look at the long term of things. So for the 8% or 15%, you might save taking one job off this platform that far does not outweigh the benefits of working as a partner with air gigs and keeping it clean and continuing to be rewarded for uh, providing excellent service on the site. Right. And, and we're always trying to up the value, you know, in, in ways to our service providers. So that's like, but then at the same time, don't not do what you're encouraging folks to do. Don't not have a website. Don't not go get your own clients. Yeah. Do not compete with us. Go, you know, go, <laughs> yeah. go out yeah. there and hustle. Be, you know, be that's discoverable, what, but don't like go promote it on the on air gigs per se. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Don't. Just keep the world compartmentalized. Yeah, you know? 100%. <laughs> so one last question for you. I feel like a lot of people are still adjusting, and this is both on the client and the provider side, where they're adjusting to doing things digitally and they're very disconnected from, I know that I've personally had clients that are like, I'm so used to talking with someone on a phone or being um, in the same room or on a Zoom call. Can they keep it clean and still be able to communicate with their clients through, because that would involve, I guess, exchanging outside information to hop on a call. What's that look like? Yes, we, we've we um, loosened that recently because we realized that, you know, some people just need that or want that as a live stream session. So like, you know, we now have an option which you can specify, do you do video chat or not? And that's just a signal that says you'd be open to it because some service providers might be like, no, I don't, you know, some people feel like the, uh, remote p- process. By that, I mean, um, rather than being having someone over you while you're working, send me your tracks. I'm going to go get creative and not, you know, completely leave you out of the loop, but I'm going to go do, you know, my first pass and I'm going to bring it back to you. Some people appreciate that, but other people need some communication. What we say is if it's 
material like to the gig or, you know, please follow it up on area gigs. Like, please, you know, document it. Because if there is a dispute, you kind of forfeit that buyer or seller protection if you take it off and we can't go to bat for you, whether you have, you know, the hundred percent or don't have the hundred percent guarantee. So that's our requirement. Keep the communication clean, clean paper trail so that if there's a problem, it's all good, but you know, use the tools you need to, to make the client happy essentially. Awesome. That's great to hear that. I'm glad to hear that you guys uh, were able to find a way to make that, that work. Yeah. Well, yeah. David, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, oh, one more question before we wrap up. Sure. What advice would you give somebody just getting started? Let's say that they can they can record themselves. They have all the skills, but they're just getting started on an online platform like like Air Gigs. So, what advice would I have in terms of how to optimize uh, their profile or how to make the most okay. of working with a par yeah. partnering with you? So, I would say think about think about all the marketing aspects because we have great award-winning musicians who will cop out on the marketing side and not get bookings and and vice versa you know like like up and comers who really put time and effort into it like they're building something they care about and if you build something you care about the energy behind that um reflects out you know and people see that so they're looking at they're looking at like a, a slideshow that's speaking to them that like you know, don't, if you're, for example, if you're a drummer, don't just put a picture of a kit, you know, put a picture of you because they're hiring you, you know, yeah. and playing the kit. Great. You know, not, not just a headshot, but like, you know, a picture of you playing or in studio, you know, that's going to give them the vibe of like, oh, this is someone I want to connect with. Uh, similarly, like no one likes to pigeonhole themselves, but if you can Give someone a few things to hang on to. Like, are you, you know, do, are you award winning? Have you been at it for 25 years? Uh, you know, are you, do you have credits that are really notable? Get those in the headline because that's what's going to pop out to people when they first see your service. So the headline is really important, really central to, to getting bookings. Um, you know, a description of your process that really helps because what, you know, the client saying, what can I expect when working with this uh, person? You know, oh, okay, this is exactly what I can expect. So, th so that's really important. And then, like I said, the, you know, having media that's well optimized. So, you know, you're not just throwing out a couple songs that are great, but in different styles. So anyone who doesn't like those styles is going to pass you by. Um, I would say all of those things are probably the you know, the, the main tips to start. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I just love what you're doing in the industry and how you're connecting talented musicians with opportunities and, and clients. And I just really appreciate you so much. Well, it's a mutual admiration society here. So thank you for what you're doing too. <laughs> Thanks, David. We'll see you next time. If you're sponging what I'm spilling on this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified every time we drop a new episode. Like a boss.